And I welcome you back to the Debrunning Channel. Today we are talking about Lake Oroville. We are going to be getting right into it. Wow, the CFS out at Lake Oroville has been through the roof and I have everything you need to know. We are starting out at the rain accumulation map. Last 72 hours and look at these numbers here. 8.43 inches of precipitation that has fallen there. And I assume a lot of this is rain. Look at this, 11.35 inches of precipitation this is in the Oroville area nine inches there you keep going here 10.35 over here not as much 7.39 and then I want to come up here to Lake Shasta where they have received a ton of precipitation as well and their inflows are even higher than Lake Oroville and they haven't even received as much precipitation but a lot of this was snow melt 2.16 over there and then we come over here to Trinity even Trinity's numbers are starting to increase not near as much you're talking about 0.81 look up here they receive 1.81 those are not near as high we come over here towards Folsom their numbers aren't nowhere near as high as Lake Oroville but that is an insane amount Lake Oroville has received a ton of precipitation just crazy 9.71 and then you had 11 these inflows are just crazy so that's what's going on there now how much more rain is supposed to fall within the next 16 days we're going to go out to tropical tidbits next and see what's going on here here we are and you can see that th they have received a ton of rain and they're getting more rain and this is going to start to go away you got a low pressure up here at 996 pretty impressive you got this nor'easter out here 973 so finally it starts to scoot towards southern california and then a little bit over towards my friends in lake havasu and out to nevada utah colorado it starts to scoot away just as we said last night this thing's still at 990 this over here is 983 this actually is not as intense as it was coming in and we continue to roll here and you can see it start to push away this day's 990 millibars bringing a ton of snowfall for Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, at least the eastern part of Iowa, rain out ahead of the front. And you can see a little bit of snow starts to push through here through Missouri, Illinois as well. Nothing in California, nothing over here, a little bit in the Colorado Rockies there. Here comes the next system. It's still pretty intense, 996, and it doesn't really hit California. It pushes more up this way, which is good. They definitely Definitely don't need any rain a little bit of showers nothing to get too crazy about nothing like this last past storm and we are currently at 108 hours out see it starts to dry up a bit but then here comes another system we'll see how strong this one is at the 144 hour mark and then you got a 987 that's a pretty intense low it dumps snow out here in the Sierra mountain range here all the way down into South Lake Tahoe 984 millibars and it scoots more up towards Washington's what they're saying right now and then you can see another low right behind it so two systems in a row it's going to dump more precipitation out there and it starts to scoot away and then snow here rain you can see it turns to snow this is really good news for Utah Colorado Wyoming as well so this is really good for the Colorado River as well all these storms have been adding up and this is really good because this is going to help the Colorado Rockies are well above average and we could possibly even beat the 2019 record somebody tweeted that out to me yesterday so i was very happy to see that there's the snowfall and then here comes another precipitation coming through we're at the 240 mark you're getting a little longer in between storms but there's still a ton of snow and rain coming towards california we are currently at 252 hours this thing goes all the way out to 384 and look at all the snow rain in northern central california they don't need any more honestly they just don't and it's going to rain and here's more snow for nevada utah as well you got a low pressure out here 996 millibars and it continues to work up and you can see that it, it kind of fizzles out but it's kind of a dirty low pressure it's not really nothing really impressive but there's a lot of millibars out here we'll have to watch to see if that intense or if that's a high pressure it looks like it could be a high pressure here comes another system coming through at the 324 hour mark and you can see that hits california as well and it starts to scoot in and this is not near as intense 999 but it's still fairly intense then it weakens to 102 so 104 
you can see it starts to fizzle apart and this is at the 372 378 and 384 and that's it that's 16 days out but you have rain snow all the way from colorado all the way back to california they just don't need any more honestly they have received enough they should be out of the drought by next thursday they should be fairly out of the drought if not all the way out of the drought this has been an insane year for precipitation and i just can't believe how things have changed on a dime pretty much now the colorado they need a lot more precipitation so they definitely could use some more and we'll be watching to see if that comes to pass let's roll out to windy.com i want to look at how much rain's being predicted for this area in the next 10 days we're going to look at the last 12 hours here in california and here's the radar loop here and you can see that oroville just got pounded tons of precipitation and it really shows and the rain has been non-stop over and over and over now let's go look at the rain accumulation now and see how much rain accumulation is coming and we will do that right now so your 15,570 is exactly what they said on friday they did bump it up a thousand cfs but they also said that they were only going to get between between 20 and 40,000 CFS, but they said they would have to monitor it. They never said nothing about no 67,806 CFS. This was at four o'clock, so this is crazy. These are high inflows. Now, you're currently looking at video from yesterday, and you can see how much this has come up last day. This thing has come up almost four feet. That's insane. So we'll be watching that. Let's go look at the graph and see what that is tonight. So the lake has come up 4.38 feet in the last 24 hours. The lake is currently at 848.05 feet, MSL, Tuesday, March 14th, 2023 at 3 p.m. The level is 51.95 feet below full pool of 900, and this thing continues to rise, and it's just a matter of time before it gets to that 850 mark, and then I wonder if, depending on the weather coming in, they'll have to monitor it, but they're definitely not going to allow it to go over the emergency spillway. Even though they have it, I don't think they want to test it, but we will see. You never know. They're only letting and 16,000 out and they said that the spillway in general can hold 270,000 CFS so you have to remember that that's a lot of cubic feet that's not even a half of what's coming in currently so they can drain that lake pretty quickly now they won't do that because it will flood towns like Oroville and Yuba City so they will definitely go through great measures not to have to do that but you just never know worst case scenario if things continue on the path that they are it could possibly end up happening now i anticipate these inflows to slow a little bit but you'll probably still get 20 to 40 thousand cfs after the next day or two it should start to ease off and it should be around 20 to 40 thousand which still is a lot but if you're releasing 15 thousand it's like for every three buckets that come in you're releasing one bucket out and that's what lakes are intended to do they're basically to prevent flooding for towns like Oroville, Yuba City, Sacramento, and whatnot. So we'll definitely be watching it with a watchful eye. Let's roll over to Lake Shasta next that is actually getting higher CFS inflows. This is going to blow your mind. You had CFS coming in at 65,960 at 5 a.m. this morning, and you can see that the level was at 1,000. 6.79 feet and the thing has come up three feet in the last 12 hours 1009.71 now your latest outflows and inflows are not currently available however though look at this 79,793 they didn't receive as much rainfall as Lake Oroville so I assume a lot of this is snow melt now they are retaining a ton of this 94 is your out that's incredible. The highest was 444. So they are currently slowly climbing and there's much more storage space in Lake Oroville. They're currently at 3,037,694 at least the last hour at, at the 3 o'clock hour at the 1500 mark. So let's go look at their graph next. Even though the lake has risen quite a bit, you can see that they do have high spikes like in 2019 they had a high spike and then it started to fizzle out. Now in 2020 it was higher even yet and in 2018 it was higher yet 2021 it was lower and 2022 it was even lower yet this thing does have high spikes on occasion it's very rare but they do on occasion so we'll be watching this as well but you're a long way from 2018 
18, 19, 20, but you're you're gaining on it quickly. So the water level is 1,009.39 feet. MSL, Tuesday, March 14, 2023 at 3 p.m. The level is 57.61 feet below full pool of 1,067. And your changes since yesterday, 4.86 feet. So this is what we got going on at Lake Shasta. Over to Trinity we go next. Now we're not going to look at the graph from Trinity, but here we are, and you can see that your inflows have increased. They went from 7,041 all the way to 12,067, so they are on the increase as well, and this lake has come up from 2,233.09 all the way to 2,234.21, and your current storage acre feet is 824,822, and they have absolutely Absolutely no CFS going out so everything they are just basically catching as they need more water in that reservoir as well it's the lowest reservoir in the lake so they definitely can use all the water it's too bad they couldn't pump some of that water from Oroville over there because they definitely need a lot more water in that reservoir that would be kind of cool down to Folsom we go next here we are at Lake Folsom and you can see that they don't have the inflows or the outflows for your four o'clock hour. Your current storage acre feet is 566,224 at 3 p.m. The level has come up. You can see that they're not receiving near the inflows like Lake Oroville or Lake Shasta. 29,256 out, 46,812 in. They're releasing more at Folsom than they are at Lake Oroville, but this lake also comes up a lot quicker. It's not nearly as big as Lake Oroville, so this is what you got going on. 46,812, and your current water level is 424.70, and we, we're going to go check the snow map and then percentage of capacity next. You're currently at 169 for April 1st and 175 for today's date. It has increased by two there at, in the north and we continue to go back. 223 for central, 213. So this all down here is above 200. We go back to the 13 to see how much it's come up. It's come up one percentage point. We go back 260, 249 and yesterday this was lower. It was 257, 247. So that's what we got going on there. Let's go to percentage of capacity next. And see what's going on at reservoirs around the state. Here we are at California Major Water Supply, and you can see Lake Oroville's up to 77%, Lake Shasta's 65, Trinity's the lowest one at 33, New Malone's is up 1% at 51, Don Pedro's 84, Folsom's 57, New Bullard's is 79, Kachuma's 95, so New Malone's has come up from yesterday, it was at 50, so it's at 51, and Trinity's still at 33, so Trinity could still use some more rain. Oroville doesn't need any more. Folsom doesn't need any more. Shasta could use a little bit more but not a lot more and McCure could use some more and that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you on the next one. God bless.